What's up, my producer friends? Another Monster here, anothermonsterproductions.com. Welcome back to another video. Today we are continuing our series, How to Blank Like a Monster, where I basically make a track in a particular genre, and then I walk you through the entire process, every single instrument, sort of my processing and my thought process behind everything. Last week we did synthwave. This week we're doing lo-fi hip hop, and I'm really excited this week. Real quick, I did want to thank each and every one of you guys who tuned in last week checked out the episode left me feedback showed me some love i appreciate you guys also if you don't mind go ahead and leave me a comment now let me know what you're thinking about this series with this video and go ahead and be letting me know what genres you want me to be doing in the near future appreciate that so lo-fi hip-hop has really exploded over the past couple years and i think there's a few reasons for this one there's been this live stream on youtube which i feel like i need to mention which i think has been a, a big contributor which is has just been going non-stop for I don't even know how long but at, at this point I mean that channel has really exploded it's the like chill beats to study and relax to you guys know what I'm talking about and then also I think another another big reason is just because lo-fi has sort of this monotonous but not in a bad or boring way like bit about it where it's just you know it's a very simple beat with a four or an eight bar loop just sort of repeating and then maybe you'll add some more instruments, but it doesn't get too crazy. And and because of the sort of repetition of it, your brain can get, just sort of latch onto it in a way where you don't have to like focus on what's going on, but it's still interesting enough that you enjoy listening to it. It's also super fun to make. Part of the reason I love making lo-fi is just because I can get back into sort of this feeling of just creating music and not have to worry so much about the mix and all these other elements. I know I'm sure a lot of you have the same sort of experience where you get in here and you're worried about making the best mix possible and it just sort of takes away from the creation process and, and just making the music. So that's one thing I love about lo-fi hip hop. As far as lo-fi hip hop as an actual genre, some of the characteristics that make it up are, first of all, lo-fi stands for low fidelity, which basically is obviously the opposite of high fidelity, which basically is just high quality. So we have a lower quality sound. A lot of times you'll have a sample which will be taken from a time period where we just didn't have the recording equipment back then that we have now. Uh, they were recorded on tapes or put on records and so you'll have these extra characteristics added in like tape hiss or record hum or a dusty record sound or various other things. Uh, another characteristic is actually adding these elements into it as producers if you know we're not using a sample, which we'll get into that as I actually start showing you my track. So there are a bunch of plugins that you guys can use to sort of achieve this lo-fi sound. There's one in particular that I use and that is Isotope Vinyl, which is a free plugin. You'll see me using this over and over again in this, in this tutorial. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video for you guys to go ahead and get that plugin for free. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the song and then we'll jump into the actual video.
All right, so the first thing that I did was I loaded up contact. My goal was to come up with this piano sort of chord progression and melody. And then I was going to potentially turn that into sort of a sample sound, chop it up and make a beat out of that. But I wasn't really feeling any of the piano banks. Uh, basically contact is sort of my go-to for like realistic pianos and stuff. It's got a lot of good banks in here. Uh, so it's a great plugin, but I ended up actually going with this Mark one because uh, I found this preset called Funky Rio, and I may have tweaked these knobs just a little bit, but basically it sounds like this. Oh, my MIDI keyboard is not hooked up, hold on. So this is, this is the sound of this, and to me it was just perfect for lo-fi. Uh, it was exactly, it, it was kind of giving putting me in that vibe and that feeling that I was going for. So I came up with this little chord progression and melody, which sounds and looks like this. Basically, I, I laid down these this MIDI first, added a couple of these notes, and then I laid down this sort of counter melody after that. Uh, altogether, it sounds like this. And then I brought it into my mixer, and I basically added some isotope vinyl on it, which immediately you'll be able to hear the vinyl mechanical noise and electrical noise, which I put on it. I also added some wear, some dust, and warp depth. Uh, put it in the 1980s, and it sounds like this now. So you guys should be able to hear a little bit more of that wear and some of the warp going in and out of tune a little bit more. It already kind of has that on the, the actual preset anyway. Um, but the Mark One, I, I mean, it just sounds so good. Uh, then I added some Sound Goodizer. Dimension expansion. Uh, then I also added a little bit of EQ, just got rid of some of these lower frequencies. And then I brought in another EQ, which I just used this EQ just for uh, automation purposes in the beginning. And then I also just used this Isotope vinyl for automation purposes, which We'll talk about that in a little bit. So the next thing that I did was I bounced this MIDI down to audio, which I put here. This is our main audio. Sounds like this. So you may be able to tell it sounds a little bit lower in pitch. Uh, so what I actually did here was I stretched out the sample just a little bit to sort of take it off the grid and give it less of a quantized sound and it also made the sample a little bit lower in pitch which instead of fixing that I decided to leave it because I thought it just sort of added to sort of that realistic as if it really were a sample sound so that was kind of a little trick that I did there all right so the next thing I did was I started on my drums so I started with my kick and I found uh, just a trap kick actually and I loaded it up here and you guys may notice uh, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video but I like to load all my instruments and drums generally unless I'm using MIDI or something like that directly into my playlist uh, the reason for this is I just prefer being able to see the waveform and that way it allows me freedom to potentially automate stuff uh, automate volumes and that sort of thing uh, which is kind of what I have going on here. You notice this line that's just automation, basically automating the volume. So the kick kind of sounds like this. So then of course I put it in my mixer and I added some EQ, which looks like this. And then I added some compression, which looks like this. Then I added some vinyl. And I think what I did with this vinyl was I put the wear up like 1% or like 2% or something like that. Uh, just was kind of experimenting with it. I was kind of going back and forth about whether or not I even wanted it on there, but I think I decided on like 2% and that was where I liked it. So the next thing I did was I added another Rough Rider. This was another plugin that I used in the last uh, video as well 
And I made this track actually a little while ago, so I don't remember exactly if I were was using a preset or what the deal was, but with it on, it sounds like this. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is sidechain. What I did sidechain-wise with this track, I wanted a really heavy sidechain on this track. I wanted pretty much the kick to just punch through the entire mix and pretty much have everything sidechained to it. This is one another characteristic that you might hear in a lot of lo-fi. Uh, it's not like a rule that you have to do it, but for this particular sort of chill sound that I was going for with this particular track, that was the sound that I really wanted. And so what I did was I basically just copied this kick sample and I did this twice just to have a little bit more control. I have various instruments linked to one or the other of these. One was just turned up a little bit louder than the other one uh, so that it was side chained even harder. But basically what you do is you bring it into your mixer and you add a Fruity Peak controller onto it. I have a Fruity Peak on both. Uh, and then what I would do is I would just mute the fr Fruity Peak controller and that way it's essentially a ghost kick. You're not actually hearing the kick sample, but you can link stuff to it. So for example, uh, I have this link to one of those. So if you right click your fader and then you can click link to controller here and uh, you can choose you know, whichever one you want, you want the peak um, if you're doing it this way. So you click peak and then you would click your input type and you want the line going this way uh, as opposed to the other way. So you want it inverted is what you'd want. And then you just click accept. And the reason for doing it inverted, basically by default, what it's doing is every time the kick sample hits, whatever you're, you're linking to that controller, it is also hitting. So instead of it cutting out when the kick hits, it would be hitting when the kick hits. So you want inverted for that. And then, uh, yeah, little tutorial within a tutorial there. All right, so the next thing that I did was I added a snare. And in this case, I don't remember exactly where this snare sound came from, uh, what pack I got it in, but I definitely downloaded it at some point. And it's just this lo-fi sounding snare that I, uh, I didn't even need to layer it with anything. I just sort of loaded it up. It sounds like this. And I did very minimal processing to it. I went ahead and loaded up uh, Isotope Vinyl and I basically just did a little bit of wear on it. So it sounds like this. And then I automated, I did this as an automation. Um, this isn't live right now, as you can see, it's muted. But basically this is sort of a radio effect. I've filtered out all of these higher frequencies and lower frequencies. And that was just to uh, create an automation clip at a couple points and same with the delay here. Uh, just to make the track a little bit more interesting at some places. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is my hi-hat. And you can see I've got it in my piano roll here. I do have everything quantized to the grid, but I've got a lot of velocity stuff going on here, which is sort of giving it more of that live, played-out bounce feel. Uh, so let's, let's take a listen. And so what I've done is I put it into my playlist and I brought it back a little bit off the grid and you can actually see on my kick samples I kind of did this a little bit too like right here uh, so basically what this is doing is it's it's giving the drums more bounce it's making them feel more like they're actually played out and here we'll just take a listen So you guys can kind of hear that the, the hi-hat sample is running a little bit behind the beat and it just, it, it gives it so much more bounce and feeling. So as far as processing goes, I brought it into my mixer. I linked it to my snare, it looks like, which, uh, so it has this isotope vinyl going on, the same one that I had on my snare. I also added another one. This one was just for automation purposes, which we sort of have automating as it comes into the beat here. So that looks like this as it kind of comes back in. Um, basically, I just have the wear all the way up on that one. And then I put a stereo shaper on, which I love doing this on hi-hats. It's something that I do a lot of the time. Uh, and what this is basically doing is just spreading the information way wide on either side. Uh, this particular setting that I have, I believe, was making it sound like it was coming more out of the left. So then I panned it 
to the right, probably like 20% or something like that to bring it back. So it still sounds like it's kind of evenly coming out of both, but it almost sounds like, sounds as if there's like different frequencies coming out of both sides, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then also I added another isotope vinyl, which looks like this, just a little bit more wear on the hi-hat. All right, so the next thing that I did was I wanted to actually add more of this sort of lo-fi tape hiss and crackle or uh, record dust, vinyl dust. And so what I did was I added this vinyl dust in the beginning of the intro, and then I added this lo-fi tape hiss into uh, once the beat actually kicks in. So as you can kind of see, these this line is just an, a volume automation, which I have going on, which sounds like this. So again, that was just sort of to make it sound real. You know, I wanted it to sound like a real record coming in. And then um, with this tape hiss, what my, my thinking behind this kind of volume spike here was uh, to give it just, again, I, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this before, but some in some lo-fi hip hop that's sampled, uh, there will be elements of the, of the tape where it, the tape like gets really loud for a second. And that was sort of what I was trying to simulate there. Um, so this is what it sounds like together just by itself, I guess. So the tape hiss gets pretty loud. Um, I actually do have, let me see, where is my tape hiss? Uh, I think it's here. Okay, so I do have this, this linked to here, which is sidechained. So what I want to do is just sort of, let me just uh, real quick, I'm just going to show you what this sounds like with the drums, just so you guys can get an idea. So it just, it, it's another small sort of element that you guys can add to just bring a little bit more into your productions and you know make it more interesting make it more fluid make it sound i guess more sampled if that's the sound that you're going for all right so the next thing that i want to talk about is our sub bass and what i did for bass was i used this heavy moog preset it's uh preset and harmless and it's like somewhere in here somewhere uh there it is and i really love this preset sound it's just it's so great, so full. Um, so, but I brought it in, and this bass line is super simple. It's just basically this. And the cool thing about this heavy Moog bass is, depending on the velocity, it ha it like really changes the the tone of it a lot. So, for example, here I'll just over here I'll play out another note. So now. Or we could go the opposite way. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. So that's the bass that I used, and I loaded it into my mixer, which is here. Uh, I put this BX subfilter, which is a free plugin, uh, which is a pretty cool plugin. And basically, what this is doing is I assume it's sort of like if you were to. Um, put like a Q with an EQ or something like that, like a tight Q and just sort of boost a certain frequency range. Uh, I think that's what this tight punch does. And then the low end basically controls the amount of how much you're adding in. So what you're able to do is kind of hone in on a certain frequency and it just makes it sound really big and really heavy in those lower bass frequencies. So I have this turned all the way down to 39 Hertz, which is pretty low. Um, and that's just, you know, I kind of was experimenting with it and that's where I liked it. And then I have this low end turned down negative seven. Uh, I don't know if this is decibels or what, but it's turned down to negative seven. So it sounds like here, actually, let me take all this stuff off first. So this is what it sounds like without processing. So then when I add my subfilter filter 
So if you guys are listening on a good pair of headphones or a good speaker system with sub, you should be able to sort of feel the difference on that. And here, let me actually, I'll go ahead and put on this um, EQ that I have. Uh, and I filtered out a lot of the high end. So you should be able to feel it actually better now. So that's my original bass. And then this is with the sub filter. So a pretty big difference there actually. Uh, and then I also added another EQ. This is another free plugin, Marvel G EQ, another great uh, e like free plugin and e EQ. Uh, this is what it looks like. And basically what I did was I actually brought out a little bit of uh, the 20 Hertz, just, just down a little bit. Uh, let's see, what am I at? Like negative 3.5 decibels, something like that. Boosted it a little bit around 31 and, and a little bit more around 50 Hertz. And so, yeah. All right, so at some point when I was creating this track, I decided that it still, there wasn't enough. I needed more, I needed another sort of counter melody to latch onto as this song because it's just, it's repeating over and over again. So what I did was I came up with this sort of little uh, do, do, do thing, which sounds like this. And basically this is, hold on, let me, you know what? Let me go in here and see exactly what's going on. All right, so this is this is literally just another Mark I. Uh, I think I probably brought it up an octave and just played that out. And so it's got literally the same processing that we already talked about on our lead sound, I believe. Actually, let me see, let me double check. Okay, so the only thing I did, I have it linked to this which is the same as what we already talked about. Uh, but then I added an auto pan, which I talked about this plugin a lot in my last video. Uh, but basically it's, it's creating an auto pan. You can kind of change the rate and then it'll pan back and forth between left and right speaker. I have the depth way up. So it's super panned, uh, pan lot six rate at 0.8. All right, so the next thing that I did was I actually added another bass, if you will, uh, which is literally just the same thing we've been using, the Mark I, that, that funky Rio preset. And I just brought it down an octave or two and played it out like this. So it's the same as the ba what the bass is playing. And this was just to fill in some of those extra frequencies that I, well, I, I actually, I think what I did was I layered this first and then I filtered out a lot of those extra frequencies on the sub, which we talked about because of that. Uh, I wanted to kind of layer these. Um, so anyway, I have that. It's the same presets as what we talked about. And basically this is where this isotope vinyl came in, uh, in the intro, which sounds like this. And then you can hear the difference when it actually comes in. It has more of those bass frequencies going on. I also decided to add this little piano in here. And basically this piano is just doing this. So I was able to actually load up contact and get my piano after all, which I was originally trying to do from the beginning. Uh, but basically I just brought it into my piano roll uh, and played out some notes super high up here and that's what it sounds like as far as processing goes uh, it looks like I just have a reverb on it which looks like this and then I have an auto pan on it which looks like this oh I guess I should go back in here um, so for this particular piano, I wanted it to be heavily reverbed and very wide. Uh, and I did sort of mess with this quite a bit. So I close, I have a closed lid. If any of you guys have this, uh, contact and are wondering, uh, closed lid, super like 91 reverb width 97. Um, and then sort of took the dynamics down to negative one release medium sustain 61. You guys can kind of see what's going on there. 
All right, so I did record some guitar for this, and originally I was I had like in my mind that I was going to record all this sort of cool, intricate stuff, and it was going to like sound super awesome. Uh, I ended up recording a lot of stuff and then bringing it into this session and sort of chopping a lot of it out and making it very much more minimal and much more sort of ambient in the background textural type guitar stuff. Uh, so it, it worked out in the in the end, but. Um, this is what the guitar sort of looks like. I've obviously chopped it up a lot and just sort of added bits and pieces throughout throughout the track. Uh, so what I did was I recorded this in another session, bounced it down, brought it in here, and I bounced it down with reverb and delay, most likely. Uh, this is what it sounds like. So then in here, I added some EQ, which looks like this. Stereo Shaper, which makes it sound really nice and big. You probably won't be able to hear it on there. Reverb. Chorus. Yeah, that chorus makes it sound even even nicer. Uh, and then I added this M Auto Pan, which again, you know, we've we've talked about this plugin. All right, guys, we made it to the last instrument. The last thing I did was I added this bell, and this bell is basically, uh, again, you know, just a little bit something extra for the track. Wanted something a little bit in those higher frequencies, and you know, it basically sounds like this. Have a little bit of reverb on it, and then once again, another auto pan to make it move back and forth, left and right. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for sticking with me, watching another segment of How to Blank Like a Monster. I really hope you liked this video, and I really hope you learned some cool stuff from it. If you did, please go ahead, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. And just real quick, if you guys don't mind, I have a quick favor to ask of you. If you can actually hit the share button on this and share this with one of your producer friends who you think would really like this video and get something out of that, that would mean a lot to me. And I appreciate you so much for doing that. I'll see you guys in the next one.